Welcome to Russell Yog's YouTube channel. Today, Professor Singh will talk about what makes a good life, what makes a sustainable good life. So we'll talk about a sustainable good life. What makes up the different components of a sustainable good life, which is sustainable on an individual level for me, for you, for our families, for the earth also sustainable on a larger level. If the earth can support it, of course earth can always support everything, but the beauty of the earth can still be maintained. The waters, the air, the birds. So we'll talk about that by looking at food, because food is a fantastic metaphor for good life. And we'll look at what kind of food can sustain us and also sustain the farmer who produces, the earth that gives the food, and the water and the rain and all the insects and bugs that also are part of the ecosystem. So let's look at food and look at various elements of food, but not just from the food pyramid point of view, but even beyond. So here is a bundle which has metaphorically all the elements of sustainable food. So I'm going to open this. Normally we look at food as pyramid of food, but we, in this sustainable discussion, we look at food beyond just the pyramid. Here are lentils, which have protein, which can sustain our muscles. Uh, here are some more lentils, which can also sustain our body, build strong muscles, bring strong bones. Some grains, which are carbohydrates, some rice here, could have wheat, could have oats. Uh, then also I have some nuts here, which are also have protein. These are peanuts, we could have walnuts, we could have almonds, we could have other kind of nuts. Then from the ocean, we get fish. Uh, we can also have other meats if you enjoy uh, meat. Here is butter, and this is a metaphor for the dairy products, milk, ghee, butter, fats. These are all part of the pyramid. Here are some vegetables. I have some peas here, some potatoes here. And we all have some fruit, some grapes, some oranges. But of course, we have a whole range of fruits that we have. Now, going beyond that, we also realize that the body is more than flesh and bones and muscles and heart and lungs. The body also has blood, uh, which needs to be cleansed. Body has a lymphatic system, which is our sweeping system the fluids that clean up dead cells, cancerous cells, clean up our body. So for that, we have uh, ginger, which cleans the blood. We have some garlic, very, very important, onions. And even beyond that, if you go, we have some cardamom here, some cinnamon here, some cloves here, which are also very important part of the meal. So in addition to the basic building blocks, we have some additional uh, elements that bring us nutrients which go beyond just the muscle and the body. So going further, I'll show you a spice box uh, which has turmeric, which has mustard, which has uh, various kind of other spices uh, which also form part of a diet which are for higher level for cleansing our brain. For example, turmeric, very important for our brain health, uh, mustard, then garam masala, which is a combination of different spices, pepper, and so on. So when you look at food, you see that there are many, many elements that are not only important for the basics, which we often think of, these are the pyramids, uh, which form the base, but also higher level. How do you clean your blood? Uh, so ginger, garlic, onions, then cinnamon, and all these uh, other spices. All these elements, if they are combined, produce a healthy body. In addition, they also are sustainable for the farmer because the farmer has to grow all these crops, not just corn, not just if your diet is based just on beef, for example. Uh, so every farmer is just growing corn, which is then fed to the animal and you eat the animal. Now that's okay, but that should be just a small part of your diet. So if you combine all these elements, if you as a consumer, if we, I eat this way, then I encourage the farmer to produce this way because I then contribute to the farming, this kind of farming that produces all this. So this as a metaphor, we'll talk about good life now. So 
Going beyond food, now we'll use a similar analogy for good life of our personal being, in our personal life, in our social life, in our family life. So one can use concepts that come from yoga, but concepts that can be interpreted for modern life. So the first level of good life is physical wellness. I should be physically well, I should be strong, I should be able to do things I want to do, I should be pain free, I should have a home to stay in which is sheltered, which doesn't leak, I should have good air, water, so just physical wellness, being able to exercise, play, enjoy uh, parks, so that is part of physical wellness. Now going beyond that, there is creative wellness, being able to create, being able to produce beautiful th things. Creative wellness requires environment where I can take risk, I can be open, I can be vulnerable, and I can try new options. Now creative wellness is a very important part of feeling well and having a good life. If you just are physically well, but there's no creativity in your life, that is not part of full range of wellness. The third level of wellness and good life is balance in life. Being able to contribute to a multi-dimensional society, being able to work, be a student, be a teacher, play, having a family. So having balance in your life, uh, that is another part of good life. So not having a one-dimensional life, but having a balanced life. The next level, the fourth level is what we call the heart level, where you have connections with others, where you have love in your life, and you're able to love others, others love you, you feel loved, you feel wanted, and you take responsibilities for others, for children, for other people in your life, and fulfill your responsibility. Because there's a great sense of purpose that comes with taking responsibility, fulfilling responsibility. Then moving up, the ability to express yourself, having harmony between your thoughts and your speech and your action, being able to express yourself through speech, through poetry, through art, through music, all these things. Um, and at the same time, keeping in mind that when we go to another layer, we don't close down. So when we express ourselves, we don't close our heart. We still have love in our life. So we don't, an expression like, I hate you, that is not a good expression because it's counter to our connection and love. So as we express, we also nurture others. So not only nurture ourselves, but also nurture others. Then going up the next level is the level of being contemplative, knowing yourself. So knowing yourself is a very important part of good life. If we don't know ourselves, we just follow the herd, we do things, then we realize, well, this is not the journey I should have taken. We waste a lot of resources. So being able to know yourself. And the last level, the seventh level, is being spiritual, seeing yourself in others, seeing yourself in nature, seeing the beauty of nature, and then enjoying the beauty of nature. And one of the things we realize is that if we have all seven levels, just like all levels of food, from basic muscle foods, lentils, grains, uh, dairy products, to higher level foods, which means mustards, mustard, spices, uh, cloves, ginger, Similarly, if all the levels of our good life are there, our life is sustainable. It doesn't cost very much because if good life is only about physical wellness and sensuous pleasures, then it's very costly. If your good life is about connections, about spirituality, it's not as costly. But you can't have an imbalanced life. If you say, I'm only going to contemplate, then you ignore your responsibilities in life you only focus on meditation. All day you meditate, that's also not part of good life. Just like if all day, all you want is physical pleasures, that's also not part of good life. So just as a farmer and the earth can be sustained if all elements of foods are present in our diet, in a similar way, it's a very sustainable society if all of us, to some extent, as much as we can, focus on all seven layers of good life, starting from physical, all the way up to spiritual. So that is a description of a sustainable good life. And depending on where we are in our lives, different elements have to be brought in. So for example, a child may focus more on physical wellness. As you get older, we may take on more responsibilities, feel more need for spirituality. But at every point, all seven elements should be in front of us and we should enjoy all seven elements.